What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 news update and tutorial. This is a big one. We're covering Gold Hen version 2.3, which is kind of a collaboration between Sistral and Illusion because this version of Gold Hen now supports plugins, plugin loading, which is a pretty big deal because instead of having to wait for Sistral to release new versions of Gold Hen, we can now get other developers who can make plugins for the current version of Gold Hen that you're running, and you can just apply it to your current version and have a bunch of extra functionality. And with this release of Gold Hen, Illusion has released a bunch of plugins to go with it. And these plugins come from a number of different developers, Sistro and Illusion, as well as a few others. So obviously the plugins is the main new feature that's been added in this version. But before we get into that, let me just talk about one other feature that's been added here in this new version of Gold Hen. Obviously all the stuff from the previous beta builds has been incorporated into this new version. But in addition to that, we also have the ability to install package files using the normal you know, package installer in the debug settings. Normally this package installer only allows you to install package files that are on a USB drive. However, in this new version of Gold Hen, it will also look for package files on the hard drive in the data folder. So in order to set this up, if we obviously enable the FTP server in the server settings right here, enable FTP, and then if we switch over to the computer and connect to the PS4 using a FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP, and then from there, we're gonna go into the data folder and just create a new directory in the data folder called PKG. So just PKG for package, and then you just wanna put your package files in here. So we can just take some package files here, drag them in, Copy the package files into the package directory. So data, package, put your package files in there in the root of that folder. And then it should show up here on the package installer. So if we switch back to the package installer, go to debug settings, package installer. There we go. The package files now show up just like they would if they were on the root of the USB drive. So I've just plugged in a USB drive that has the same package files on. So what happens if you have the same package files in the hard drive and on the USB? Well, they'll just show up as duplicates. You'll have two versions of the package file, one on the hard drive and one on the USB drive. So there we go. I'll unplug the USB and there we go. We only have the ones on the hard drive now showing up. So yeah, pretty handy because you can now take package files, just copy them over with FTP to that folder on the hard drive and install them. And then you can just delete them from that folder afterwards. So yeah, another handy way of installing package files over the network instead of uh, you know installing them to a USB if you prefer. So that's a new feature that's been added as well to this version of Gold Hen. But let's get back to the plugins because that is the biggest thing that's been added here in this new version. Let's take a look at some of the plugins that have been released and obviously I'll show you guys how to install them here in this video and I'll go over what they all do. So first of all here we've got the AFR plugin, the Application File Redirector. Now the big deal about this is that it can swap out files in the data folder. So instead of having to create modded game updates to replace game files, if you want to swap out, you know, sound files like music in a game or, you know, I don't know, cutscenes or texture replacements for games like Resident Evil, the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake where you can replace textures and skins and that kind of stuff, as well as also for Fallout and Skyrim, the PC mods that you can convert over to the PS4 version. Instead of having to create a modded game update for that, you can instead just put the raw game files in the data folder and the plugin will swap them out at runtime. And you can also disable that from within Gold Hen as well. So you can toggle it on and off, which is a pretty big deal. It's basically like overlay FS for the Switch. If that's still a thing, I haven't been in the Switch scene in a long time, but that used to be a thing. So that's from Sistro and Joe Cover. Then we have the button swap by Joe Cover, which allows you to swap the X and circle around on Asia region consoles. So in certain regions, they have it where circle is select and X is to go back instead of the other way around. So you can put this plugin on to enable that if you prefer to swap it over. And then you've also got the flip rate remover by Illusion, which removes the frame rate limit for games using system function SCE video out set flip rate. So that pretty much explains it. It just removes the frame rate limit for games that run that function. Also, of course, we've got the Game Patch plugin, which is something I covered in a previous video where I covered the test version of this same plugin. However, we now have the full release and it still works in the, in the exact same way. So if you want more detail on how to, you know, configure that plugin and apply the patches, 
then check out my previous video. I'll leave it linked down in the video description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. But basically this allows you to patch the game's executable at runtime as well. And this works on retail games and fake package games. So again, instead of having to make a modded update to patch the executable, you can instead just use this plugin. So it will allow you to install things like Illusion 60 FPS patches and frame time fixes, as well as skip intro logos and some debug menus and stuff can be enabled with this as well and some cheats. And you can apply whatever patches you want to your games with the Gold Hen Cheats Manager, the latest version. So you've got that there as well. And then finally, we also have the No Share Blocks plugin. So what this one does is it basically removes the image watermark on some games. Some games have this little watermark in the bottom right hand corner that it can remove. And it can also enable the video and screenshot options uh, when they're normally blocked in some games. So some games have them blocked or in certain sequences in the game they're blocked and this will unblock them for you. So quite a few plugins there. So what you want to make sure when you're installing plugins is that you're not installing two versions of the same plugin. So for example, with the game plugin, the game patch plugin, if you still have the old test version installed on your gold hen, then make sure you delete it before you install this one. Otherwise, they will conflict with each other. As far as I'm aware, all the plugins here that have been released in this section should be cross compatible with each other. So you should be able to have all these plugins installed at the same time without them interfering with each other but that may not be the case for future plugins that get released. So you must check the compatibility before installing your plugins to make sure that they're all going to work with each other. So now let's get into how we actually install these plugins. So first of all, you need to run Gold Hen version 2.3, not to be mistaken for 2.2.3. This is the new version 2.3. So I'd recommend going to kmeps4.site, that's Chameleon's host, which is normally one of the first exploit hosts to include the latest Gold Hen payload. So you should be able to find it here. Obviously other exploit hosts will update in time. So you can just head to, you know, the Chameleon AIO host and then go to manual or auto host and then load the gold hen payload from there. Once you have it loaded, as you can see here, you'll find a new option called enable plugins loader. So that should be disabled by default, I believe. So we're not going to enable it yet. What we do want to make sure we have enabled is the FTP server. So if we go into server settings, Obviously, you just want to make sure that you have the FTP server enabled and that you have the IP address and port number showing up there in the top left. And then we're going to switch on over to our computer and connect through FTP. You can copy the plugins from the USB drive to the hard drive of the PS4 with PS4 Explorer, but it's quicker to use FTP if you can use it. So we're going to use FileZilla or any other you know FTP client. You can use FTP within Windows itself as well if you prefer. So we're going to go ahead and punch in our PS4's IP address and then for the port number it's 2121 and then we can quick connect. So from there we're going to go down to the data folder and then the gold hen folder and this will contain everything we need. So we have a plugins folder in here. So this is where we want to copy all of our plugins. So if we open up the plugins folder here. So download any plugins that you want to use. I'm not going to install all of these because I don't really have any use for the button swap plugin. So I'm going to use the AFR plugin, of course, which I highly recommend you install. And we're also going to install the game patch payload for patching the executable with 60 FPS patches and other stuff, as well as the flip rate remover. We might as well install that, I guess. And then also I'll install the watermark PRX, which removes the watermark and allows you to do the video recording and screenshots when it's normally blocked. So we just drag the plugins here into the plugins folder. And there we go. That's them all copied over right there. Okay, so we still need to add them to the plugins.ini file, the configuration file for the plugins. So if we go back to the gold hen folder, there is a config file in here, but the plugins config file is not in here. So what we need to do, first of all, if we switch back over to the console, we can generate this file. Gold hen is able to generate this file for you. So if we switch back over here to our console, and then if we go back to the plugin settings and then just turn the plugins on, and if we run a game, so we'll just run any old game here. Let's just do Minecraft because it loads pretty fast. Okay, there we go. So that's loading. So if you enable the plugins and you have plugins actually installed as we do now, it should, when you launch a game and go out of here, it should generate the plugins folder. So if we close out of here, if we go back to our computer again, and now if we refresh, 
you can see it has created the plugins.ini file. So I'm not sure if it's just enabling the plugins while you have plugins in this folder and then it will automatically generate it or if you have to have a plugin installed and launch a game or an app in order for Gold Hen to generate the plugins file. But once you have the plugins.ini file in here, we can copy it out to our computer. There it is right there. We can just double click it to open it in Notepad. And you can see it's got some examples here. So there's two ways to load the plugins. You can do it for a specific title ID. So if you add the plugin in here and put the title ID of the game that you want to apply the plugin to, and that is just for plugins that are game specific. So any plugin that you only want to work for one specific game, then you can put the title ID of that game in here, add the plugin in, and then it will only load that plugin for that title. And any other game you launch will not load the plugin for. So anything that's game specific, you should add it to this list here. But any other general plugins that should just work for, you know, all the games that you run, of course, you can still disable them. Even if you do apply a plugin for every game, for every title, you know, you can just go into the Gold Hen settings and disable the plugins if you want to load the game without the plugin running. So that's possible. So you don't have to really do it with game specific. But if there is a plugin that's game specific, add it to this list. If it's a plugin that you want to apply to all your games, then you're going to apply it to the default list right here which is what I'm going to do. So what you want to do, we can get rid of the example. So this example here, we're just going to get rid of the semicolon because that comments it out. So we're going to undo that so that's no longer commented. And then we can add our plugin file right here. So if we take a look at the plugins that we've got, we go into the plugins, we've got the afr.prx. So we'll just add that in here. So this is uh, afr.prx. And then we just add the rest to the list. So we'll just add a bunch of plugins here. And then of course we've got the flip rate remover. So we'll add that. And then of course gamepatch.prx. Copy that, add that in. And then the last one is the watermark. And we'll add that one in as well. And that's us added all the plugins. And then we can hit save, control S or file save. And then if we go back out here, we're going to copy the plugins file and overwrite the original one. And that has the plugins applied. So that's how you actually install the plugins. And if we switch back over to the console, all we need to do is go to the Gold Hen settings, plugin settings, and then make sure that enable plugins loader is ticked. And then we should be good. The plugins are now running. Okay, so to give a little example of how the AFR payload works, the application file redirector, We've got Dying Light 2 here, which does not have the dev menu installed. Normally to install the dev menu that was supported by uh, DeathRGH, the dev menu for this is actually one of the game files. It's not the executable that needs to be patched. It's one of the game files that has to be replaced to enable the dev menu. So instead of having to make a modded update, we can use this plugin that we just installed to install the dev menu in a much quicker way. So as you can see, there's no text here to say that the dev menu is enabled. If I continue with my current progress. Okay, so in the game here, if I hit the pause menu and we go over to hints, which is normally where you go to load the dev menu, you can see it just takes us to the normal hints. So yeah, the dev menu is definitely not installed. Instead of a package file that I need to install on top of the game, we have the actual raw game file here that contains the dev menu. So to install it, again, we'll just head over to FTP, which should still be running, which it is even though we're running the game. So if we go back to the root directory and if we go into the MNT folder and then the sandbox folder and then the PFS MNT folder, we can see the game files right here for the game that's running. So Dying Light 2. If I go into the app zero directory that contains the game files, if I go into the PH folder and then the source folder, you can see the data zero file is right here. So we just have to recreate that same structure in the data folder in order for the plugin to replace the file. So as you can see, we've got the PH folder and then the source folder. So this file is contained in two folders. From the root directory, we've got PH, source, and then there's the data zero.pack. So if we go back to the root directory, first of all, and then we go into the data folder and then go into the gold hen folder, in order to set up the structure for AFR, what we need to do is create a new folder, a new directory in here that is just called AFR. So AFR and click OK in uppercase characters. And then if we go into that folder, you just want to create another folder with the title ID of the game. 
So if I switch back over to the game and we go back, of course, to our home screen, you can see we have the title ID labels showing there. So CUSA12555, that's the title ID. So I'm just going to create a title ID folder in here called CUSA12555. And then in that folder, I'll just create that same structure. So we'll create a PH folder in here. And then inside that folder, we'll create another folder called source. And then in that folder, we will copy the data 0.pack. And that's it. So that's the same structure as the original game where that file's located in the actual game files. So now when I launch the game, it should swap out this particular file. It will look for this file here in the data folder in this structure for ph source data 0.pack. It will see this file here in the data folder and it will use that instead of the original file. And that should get us the dev menu loaded here without having to create a modified update. So if we switch back over once again to the console, and of course I'll need to close out of the game and then relaunch it. And it should now use that modified file. But uh, yeah, as you can see there, uh, we are basically up and running and here we go. We get into the main menu. And there we are, Dying Light 2 PS4 dev menu brought to you by Death RGH. So let's continue, make sure it definitely works here. Okay, here we are back in the game. So once again, I'll head into the pause menu and we'll hop over to hints. And as you can see, it activates the developer menu right there. So yeah, of course, this AFR payload is really, really useful for swapping out these game files for many, many games. Of course, you've got dev developer menus like this for Dying Light 2, Dying Light, Dead Island series as well. And of course, there's other games. There's things like Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake where you can swap out the skins for your character skins and for enemy skins and that kind of stuff. You know, of course, Skyrim and Fallout where you can install PC mods this way without having to create a modified game update. Uh, you know, replace sound files, cinematics, all that kind of stuff. As well as, of course, the game patch plugin as well which can patch the executable to add like permanent cheats, 60 FPS patches, frame pacing fixes, resolution patches, all of that kind of stuff, other debug menus and skip intro logos, all of that can be done with the game patch plugin as well, all without having to create a modified game update. And of course, if you wanted to, you know, load the game, let's say I'm done with messing around with the developer menu and I actually want to do a legitimate playthrough of this game, well, then I can just close out of the game and disable the plugins by going into the gold hen menu here, going to plugin settings and turning it off. And then when I launch the game, the plugin will no longer be loaded and therefore the game will be stock. Developer menu will not be enabled anymore. So of course you have that option as well. You can just toggle the plugins on and off from that option in the settings. So yeah, this is a huge deal that we now have plugins for Gold Hen. I'm hoping a lot more will come out and I'm sure there'll be a plugin manager at some point that will come out to make it easier to add plugins and manage your plugins and update your plugins uh, without having to manually, you know, go through FTP and edit a, an INI file, a configuration file to add all of your plugins. That's just what we have to do right now because it's very early stages. But once we have some kind of homebrew app or some other plugin loader of some kind, it's going to be much, much easier. So yeah, that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. If you want to see more again about the game patch plugin, like I've already done a video on the test version of that plugin. This new version, the complete version is basically the same in the way it works. So, you know, it may have some slight improvements, but generally the whole process is the same. Run Gold Hen, you update your patches you apply whatever patch you want to the game and then run the game with the plugin enabled and you'll get that patch applied in game so you can check that video out down in the video description so hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next one